you secured a low concentration sample and asked the head nurse to serve as an expert witness. It's a great thing that the direct sample wasn't actually used. Farina could have... I... I can't believe... You... Anything she says at this point will sway anyone. The odds are just too stacked against her now. With all the things that have been said, Paimon doesn't think there's any way left for Farina to win. I believe the time for arguments and presentation of evidence has come to an end. If there are no objections, we will move on to the final judgment. In my capacity as Chief Justice, I shall now render judgment on Farina's misrepresentation of herself as the Archon of Fontaine. As a human who knowingly deceived her fellow citizens, Farina is... Guilty. We shall now turn to the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal to render the final verdict on the charges. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Farina is... No, the Oratrice also displays a guilty verdict. Isn't that correct, then? However, the exact wording of the verdict is thus. The Hydro Archon, guilty to be punished via the death sentence. Uh, the, the death sentence? That's actually one of the available sentences? I've always thought that it was just a myth. The one and only time the death sentence has been handed out at the court, and it's been given to the very person we've worshipped as the god of justice? What an unexpected twist. Farina's been sentenced to death by the Oratrice? We just wanted to use the trial to show her the seriousness of things so she'd tell us the truth. How did things escalate this quickly? This outcome is indeed quite strange. According to Fontaine's current definitions of justice, as well as its recommendations for criminal sentences. Is this sentence really appropriate for the crimes that have been committed? Yeah! Even Mashe wasn't sentenced to death by the Oratrice! You know, the real evil mastermind behind the serial disappearances case! Indeed. Not only is Farina's sentence overly excessive, the very point of our trial today was also to prove that Farina has never been the Hydro Archon in the first place. But now, the Oratrice seems to have deliberately invoked the title of the Hydro Archon. 
What does this mean? Um, excuse me, if I may interrupt. Is the trial still going? Fremine! Huh, you finally made it! I assume this means you've completed your mission? Mm-hmm. Any mission Father assigns to me will always be top priority. Is... that the first prophecy slate? Huh. So the Nave privately arranged for Fremine to try and find the missing slate! I looked everywhere and finally found it at the bottom of the sea. It took me a long time to get around some dangerous stretches of water. But has the trial already concluded? Then... doesn't that mean I've come too late? Oh no. Father will be disappointed in me. Thank you for your hard work, Mr. Femine. Please allow me to review the record left on the slate. <laughs> Traveler, I believe that you have already seen the other existing slates, and would like you to come here and confirm their contents. sense of the Hydro Archon's crime. It has to do with Fontaine's lost history. Huh? Isn't the Hydro Archon just guilty of deceiving her people? Oh, wait, no, that's Farina, and we've already proven that she's not the Hydro Archon. Uh, so when you say Hydro Archon, do you mean the real Hydro Archon we've been kind of talking about? In truth, Everything that you've encountered in Fontaine up until this point can be traced back to the contents of these stone slates. However, I'm uncertain as to how much sense they currently make to you. Okay, let's try to recall the contents of the other three stone slates. Paimon will do her best to help you remember. Just said. It seems to show the previous Hydra Archon using her divine power, and then the Oceanids turn into humans. Does that mean that Fontanians are transformed Oceanids? Oh, Paimo wasn't expecting that. But if Oceanids can turn into humans, then perhaps this process can be reversed as well. The second stone slate shows Celestia floating in the sky. And the Hydra Archon and her people worshipping it together. But the heavens still brought judgment down upon them. This must be the point when the Hydra Archon and the Fontanians were branded with their original sin. Does this mean that the original sin and the Hydra Archon sin are the same thing? The third slate shows the Hydra Archon sinking into the sea surrounded by many people. Huh. That reminds Paimon, didn't we also watch that happen to someone else? Well, the fourth slate is the prophecy the Fontanians have been talking about. People dissolving into the sea, the Hydra Archon crying on her throne, and so on. We didn't believe that such a crazy disaster could happen at first, did we? But after that incident, it was just a question of when and not if.
We know from the case of the serial disappearances of young women that Fontanians can be dissolved in primordial seawater. And the first stone slate tells us that long ago, the Hydro Archon used her power to turn Oceanids into humans. This might be the reason that Fontanians can dissolve. <laughs> Not as simple as falling into the sea. When Navia fell into the sea, her consciousness was subjected to judgment. The stone slates show the people gathered around the Hydro Archon in the sea. Could that be alluding to the same thing? <sighs> from the stone slates found its way into society, but not many people believed it at first. The fortress of Meropede was nearly flooded with primordial seawater, which we know can cause Fontanians to dissolve. It seems increasingly likely that the prophecy may come true. If we hadn't dealt with it in time, things could have gone very badly. What is about to take place has all happened before. The true sin of the Hydro Archon that Nervilet mentioned, and the original sin cast down on the people of Fontaine by Celestia, as recorded on the stone slates. They'll dissolve into the primordial sea but won't cease to exist. Their essence will flow in the seawater, converge, and take the form of an Oceanid! The Hydro Archon was sentenced to death in court, shocking everyone present. Hmm... Perhaps this means that her sin was actually Fontaine's original sin. Navia fell into the water inside those ruins, and she nearly dissolved. She was surrounded by the people of Poisson in a court within her consciousness, and was forced to take part in a trial meant to make her stay. The eruption of the primordial sea at the fortress of Meripede was the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass no matter what! The prophecy's contents can all be verified by recent events. If we combine what we know together, loads of truths should come to light! Let's hear them. Incredible! Linny, did you hear that? We're... not real humans. All Fontanians were originally created by the late previous Hydro Archon, with Oceanids as their basis. The evidence for that can be found in how only Fontanians could dissolve in primordial seawater. And how all the girls Vache dissolved were also turned into Oceanids. Oh, and according to Navia, when she was about to get dissolved, she also saw everyone gathered around for a trial. All of them in the shape of Oceanids. Indeed. Yeah, and it follows from the content of the first slate that she probably angered Celestia by creating humans without prior permission. That could 
also explain why the Oratrice judged the Hydro Archon to be guilty. It's to account for that ancient sin. The Hydro Archon's true sin was creating us? And yet, after many hundreds of years, the Hydro Archon's creations have turned around to try to judge the Archon within the Opera Epicles. <sighs> the twists of history are often the most unexpected of all. Yeah! Isn't the image here just like when Navia fell into the sea? So wouldn't it be trying to show the image of the Hydro Archon also falling into the sea once the prophecy has been fulfilled in the Forest Slate? In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Did Paimon get all that right? You've made some keen deductions. I must say, given how much you still don't know, it is impressive that you've already managed to connect so many pieces of the truth. However, while you were able to decode all the information on the slates, they've also been etched with an additional layer of hidden information using a different power source. When we were at the ruins, I tried to decipher the hidden information recorded in the slates. But since we only had three slates at the time, I was unable to come to a full conclusion. Now that the slate collection is complete, I shall make another attempt to decipher the narrative recorded within. If everything goes well, we should finally be informed of the unadulterated truth. Hmm. Well? <laughs> Did you get it? I believe I should share this truth not only with you, but with all the people of Fontaine as well. I will try to briefly summarize it for you. Your hypotheses regarding the origin of Fontanians and the sin of the Hydro Archon were both correct. In the Fontaine of old, the previous Hydro Archon sensed the yearning of her Oceanid familiars for life on land. The Oceanids were enamored with the beauty and romanticism of human beings, and wishing to have those experiences for themselves, expressed to the Hydro Archon their desire to become of a similar kind. However, even though water as an element is intricately linked with the power of life, the Hydro Archon, as one of the seven, did not possess the authority to create a new form of human life. Not one to give in. She eventually found a way to create permanent humanoid bodies for her familiars by appropriating the power of this planet's primordial sea. She poured primordial seawater into the Oceanid's blood vessels, creating humanoid mimics in the process. But if Fontanians were to ever come into direct contact with water from the primordial sea, the power within their bodies would escape these artificial restraints and return to the sea. As a result, their forms would collapse, and they would be reverted to their original forms as Oceanids. Of course, the Hydro Archon never received permission from the Heavenly Principles to create a new human race. And thus, the Hydro Archon and all of her creations came to shoulder the original sin of appropriating the power of the Primordial Sea. That is the true history of how the people of Fontaine first came into being. So you... I... We were all Oceanids before we turned into human beings? That's way too much information for me. I think I'm just going to pretend that I never heard a single thing. Wait, but if that's the truth, we can't let the Hydro Archon be sentenced to death. After all, her only sin was creating us. This really might be too much information for your regular Fontanian, but it does answer a lot of our questions. Alas, your hypothesis regarding the third and fourth stone slates was inaccurate. The slate's respective positions are, in fact, correct. A key point of the visual on the third slate is how all the individuals depicted in the water are humans rather than Oceanids. They have not been dissolved, which implies that the water depicted in this slate is not water from the primordial sea. The nation of Fontaine is the nation of Hydro, as well as the nation of Trials and Justice. 
Instead of being the literal element, the water in the scene symbolizes judgment and justice. You may also recall Navia's experience. When she fell into the sea, her consciousness was surrounded by that of many others who intended to hold a trial to determine her fate. Therefore, the meaning of the third slate is that the people of Fontaine shall try the Hydro Archon at the Court of Justice. Yes, it refers to our present situation. I think I'm following now. So, what you're saying is, even though we decided to put on this trial to avoid fulfilling the prophecy, in truth, everything we've done has happened exactly as the prophecy foretold. So now, it seems, we're the ones making sure it comes true. What should we do? Huh. No matter what, the prophecy will be fulfilled. Is this what it feels like to be a prisoner of fate? If that's the case, does that mean the scene in the fourth slate will also be fulfilled soon? Traveler, I would like to point out another small fallacy in your deductions. About the fourth slate, you probably thought that the eruption of primordial seawater beneath the fortress of Meripede served as the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass, yes? However, I believe that rather than being a sure sign, that eruption could in fact only be a small warning of something far worse to come. As for the root cause of the catastrophe, I believe you've already encountered it once before. This eruption was just a small warning of the things to come. We must find the root cause. Dream and reality. If we're talking about a true culprit, that could only be that thing inside the primordial sea, right? The truth, the original sin, the trial, and the root cause of the disaster. So we've met it at last. I understand very well why it has chosen to make an appearance here. That whale does not belong to Tevat. It is a monster that has traversed the stars, weeping all the while. It has been greedily consuming the energy from the planet's primordial sea, using it to grow. That is the main cause for the rising sea levels. And once it has finished consuming all of the energy contained within the sea, 
Its next step will be... You said that when the Hydro Archon first created Fontanians out of Oceanids, she filled their blood vessels with primordial seawater. Precisely. That whale finds the blood of Fontanians nigh impossible to resist. Therefore, when it left the primordial sea, it decided to make its next stop a packed opera house full of food. Food in the form of Fontanians. Uh, we just barely managed to push it back, right? In that case, won't it come back to target the people again once it's managed to recover its strength? That is correct. Indeed, it is more accurate to say that we should thank that Harbinger for buying us some time. Without him, the whale would have likely come onto land far sooner. From the way he looked, he must have been fighting the creature for quite a long time. That battle maniac! We've always known that he had a special connection with that whale, but we definitely didn't expect it to help us out like this! Anyway... Now that we know that this whale is the actual cause of the disaster recorded in the prophecy, all we need to do to stop the prophecy would be to find a way to beat it up, right? It is too late. It had already absorbed too much of the Primordial Sea's energy before we could notice it. At this point, it has become practically integrated with the sea itself. Even if the entirety of Tevat were to be destroyed, it could still survive and swim off towards some other world. That... that's not something I will accept. We've already done everything we can, and we even found the true culprit. We've come so far. You can't just tell me that the last hurdle is some impossible foe. That's just not fair. Indeed, that's not how a grand performance should end. I'll fight it to the end, no matter what. So the prophecy will be fulfilled no matter what, huh? The prophecy. Yes, what has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the gods' gaze does not fall? Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide no matter what will happen in Tevat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. I believe it is preparing to carry out the death sentence. shocked expression on your face is just too amusing. I couldn't help myself. You are not Farina. Who are you? Ah, uh, 
The sweet sound of bewilderment. Marvelous. A sure sign that my attempt to deceive everyone was a resounding success. But to answer your question, I am Fosalor. You know, the god. Fosalor? Why did you deceive us? Oh, that wasn't my goal, of course. Goodness, no. But I had to fool everyone else, too, if I was to stand any chance of deceiving the Heavenly Principles. Deceiving the Heavenly Principles? It's all because of that pernicious prophecy. Dreadful, wasn't it? Everyone doomed to dissolve. Fontaine condemned to be flooded. One was not amused. In fact, one was positively bemused when that problem was thrust upon me by my dearest predecessor. That's the former Hydro Archon Egeria for the uninitiated. It hardly gets more disastrous than a preordained national catastrophe, now does it? She knew full well that the prophecy would surely come to pass. And as one of the Seven, she also knew full well that one defies the heavenly principles at one's peril. So yes, as you have no doubt surmised, it was a rather impossible situation that I found myself in. I spent a terribly long time mulling it over, alone on the ocean floor. And I was almost growing barnacles by the time I finally realized there was only one possible solution to this confounding conundrum. I had to outwit the heavenly principles, allow the prophecy to be fulfilled, ostensibly at least, while saving everyone at the same time. <laughs> I'm a genius, I know. I can only assume that's why Egeria chose me as her successor. Although, looking back now, it was hardly the inheritance one dreams of. Between the task of saving the nation, the quotidian duties of the Hydro Archon, and not to mention the original sin of creating a new race of humans, I dare say she left me quite a colossal mess to clean up. <sighs> but one can only play the hand one is dealt. I did not choose this any more than I chose to be one of her Oceanid familiars. So you were also once one of the Oceanids, transformed into a human by Egeria's hand? Yes, I was. I always dreamed of becoming human. And I still do, even now. In my eyes, to be human is to be part of the greatest opera ever known. After becoming a god, I separated my divinity from my body and spirit, leaving behind only a self that was as naive and bewildered as my past self on her first day as a human being. The me you see before you now is that divinity, and the human counterpart I left behind, I named Farina. She could feel joy, sorrow, and everything in between. She could be as vain and conceited, or as meek and vulnerable, as she wished. Her strengths were of a kind only a human could possess, as were her shortcomings. But in my eyes, Farina's humanity was what made her perfect. She was perfectly human in every way. The person I always wanted to be. Anyway, so then I cursed her. All part of the plan, of course. The plan to deceive the heavenly principles. <sighs> Do you still remember the final scene of the prophecy? The Hydra Archon, alone, weeping on her throne. In order that the prophecy might appear fulfilled, I invited Farina to be an actress to play the part of the Hydro Archon in the prophecy. Under the curse I placed on her, so long as I, Fosalor's divinity, continued to exist, she could not die. But nor was she free to live her life in the pursuit of happiness. Instead, 
She was forced to take the stage in the Opera House, to embrace the role of leading lady, to forever play the part of the god from the prophecy, all to create a deceitful appearance of that prophecy coming to pass. I suppose now you probably understand why your court is called the Opera Epicles. But Farina is only human, isn't she? Even though she has had a long life, her mind is no stronger than that of any other ordinary human being. I cannot begin to fathom what she has had to endure. It must have been torture for her. It has indeed. And although she is, in a sense, me in human form, I most definitely owe her an apology for it. It's been five hundred years, and all along, she's been playing her part in the most unimaginably long, unbearably lonely, and agonizingly painful opera of all time. to come onto the stage. Now, I understand your admiration for my august self, but I must ask you to keep to the rules. All right, all right. It is not my intent to reprimand you. There is no need to state your name. Just be off with you. Do not distract me from my performance. <laughs> oh, do not jest. Can you not feel it? I am Fosalor. The eyes of countless Fontanians are upon me. I must, at all times, display the utmost elegance and nobility. is experiencing a technical difficulty, but worry not. The guards shall resolve it soon enough. Audience 
is still watching me, you know. Guards? Wait, where are the guards? Guards! Frumpy! Delve into destiny. Farina. Farina. Huh? Uh, who's that? Uh, who's calling me? Where are you? Be not nervous. Be not afraid. I am before you. Uh, uh, wait a moment. You're near me? How can this be? Hmm. <laughs> Mirror you, huh? You know what? That's not bad. Let's go with that. Mirror me? Well, what do you wish to say? The prophecy. Have you heard of it? What prophecy? Oh, wait. I know. I think. I don't know why, but it's in my head somehow. The people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Oh, <laughs> very good. You know it well. What's going on? I can't seem to remember anything clearly. The only thing I know for sure is this prophecy. Will it really come to pass? <laughs> yes, it will. And that is why I've come to you. Disaster will come to Fontaine sooner or later. Things will develop just as the prophecy declared. 
There is no escaping it. exist in this world precisely to give people a chance to turn things around. It is the reason why you met me today. I will tell you how to save everyone, but you may have to suffer somewhat. Oh, oh, so there's still hope after all. Goodness, you frightened me. You spoke so much and with so much certainty. As for the suffering, well, I will admit that the first thing that came to mind was, why do I have to be the one to suffer? But if the prophecy will come true, I'll also die anyway, right? So if I've already met you as my magical meeting in this world,
scales with all the people of Fontaine on one side and my pain on the other. Is it not obvious where the scales should tilt? <laughs> you truly are the perfect human. My ideal. I suppose this would also be the justice that belongs to you. Huh? Don't worry. It's nothing. Listen well. Fontaine has just lost its Hydro Archon. I need you to play a role. That of the new Archon. Play as... a god? That's right. You must begin a never-ending masquerade. You must never let anyone suspect your identity. If you can keep it up, then I shall have my way of defying this prophecy. But should your identity be revealed, then all hope will be lost. But how will I do this? A human assuming the role of a god without being exposed? Don't worry. What you must do is not to turn yourself into a real god. You simply need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. Being a human yourself, I'm sure you already know what such an entity would be like. Remember, your true challenge will not be pursuing divinity, but contending against humanity. Um, I'm still not sure I understand, but I'll try. I'll try to do this. So, how long am I going to have to play this role? To accomplish this mission, you will have to stay on the stage for many, many years. You will endure and not grow old until your task ends. But, I promise you, all will eventually end in a magnificent and dramatic trial, and everyone will be saved. A trial? Huh. How exciting. I'll be looking forward to it.
The Maison Cardinalis has announced my accession, but this is my first time facing the people. What should I say to most appear like a god? To be honest, I still don't know. Perhaps I should first try to act natural. Ahem! Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to the Opera Epicles. I'm sure you've all heard about how I have taken on the role of Hydro Archon. Indeed, I am Farina de Fontaine, your new Archon. In truth, I know little about becoming a nation's new god, but it will be my honor to guide you all. As the god Fosalor, the god of justice, I shall do all within my power to lead you into an age of fairness and justice. Once again, thank you all for coming. If you should have any questions or suggestions, please send them to the Maison Cardinalis. The future of Fontaine will require us to work together, after all. This should do it. I thought I might stammer, but thankfully, I was able to convey my thoughts just fine. Okay, and next. That's the new Hydro Archon. Is this some kind of joke by the Maison? I would have thought that a being that surpasses humanity would be a bit more... assertive. <coughs> hey, did you hear that? She even told us to send her suggestions there at the end. Shouldn't gods be all-powerful? She's being so... Modest. What's the difference between her and an ordinary person, then? Uh, if you ask me, perhaps the succession didn't actually happen. She might just be a maison back puppet. Wait, what's going on? Why is everyone suspecting me of being a fake? Oh, this is bad. If I get exposed here, there'll be no saving the people from the prophecy. Right. Mirmi said that I just need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. Calm down, Farina. Think. Think. What do the people want? How would they imagine a god to speak and act? Assertive, with a strong sense of presence. One who can dispel all doubt. That is the character I'm fated to play. <sighs> <laughs> oh, very good, my people. Only ones such as you are deserving of my rule. Now, I was wondering if some weak puppet were to one day come onto the stage and claim ownership of this opera house, would the children of Fontaine follow them? <laughs> well, it seems that you would all see right through them. Having passed my test, you are qualified to witness wondrous trials alongside my august self here in this opera house. You may consider my previous act a door gift of sorts. I thought it was a debut that suited the atmosphere. Now then, let us be reintroduced. Ah. Uh. So that was just a performance. How could I have forgotten that we were inside an opera house? Her personality? It's quite shocking, to be honest, but I suppose it's a better look than before. Such a fascinating and bold deity. How wonderful. Our future may yet be bright after all. It seems I've turned them around. Best follow this flow and restart my accession speech. My dear people, whether you acknowledge me or not, whether you trust me or nay, I say to you, keep faith in your ardor for justice. We have heard it said that this nation's sins can no longer be washed away. Well, I say that justice is most fragrant when it blooms amid sin. The scales of justice should not weigh heavy in the hands of its god. On one side, it must carry fairness and justice. <laughs> and on the other, praise and applause. <laughs> May law be the prayer on our lips. May judgment be our worship. 
Let us light the fires and drink to the future of Fontaine! There is no trouble in this world that justice cannot solve. All that is needed is for you, my people, to believe in it, heart and soul. So long as I, the Archon Fosalor, stand within the Opera Epicles, so long as I stand before the Oratrice, I shall even judge the gods of this world! Yeah! Lady Farina, here are today's case reports, as well as a summary of the follow-up for your perusal. <sighs> Come now. Was I not just at the Opera House in person? Leave these kinds of things to Nouvellet. Besides, none of these trials were the one that I'm looking forward to the most. Um, if I may be so impertinent, what kind of trial are you truly looking forward to? A magnificent, dramatic, and wondrous trial. A trial to end all things. <sighs> How could you hope to understand? That's true. I fear I lack the ability to grasp your divine thought, Lady Archon. No need for fright. And do not take what I said before too seriously. <laughs> Go now. Do your duties. The trial I await. It will come one day. Lady Farina, uh, I don't know what to say. Thank you for agreeing to see me. No need to thank me. Or rather, thank your own sense of perseverance instead. Long have you stood in line to meet me, have you not? <laughs> oh, I'm afraid that's just an inevitable consequence of my divine charm. <laughs> All right. Deuteria, is it? How is your son's illness? Uh, you remembered me, and you knew of my family, too. Uh, he is doing much better now. In fact, he is far more of an ardent believer than I. He was the one who forced me to seek an audience with you, and to bring your words back to him. <laughs> oh, good. Very good. If this should happen again in the future, please do not hesitate to come and tell me. Going down to citizens' homes every so often, while not usual practice, should serve as a fine change of pace. Oh, you're such a gentle and wise god. Thank you once again. On behalf of my son. Lady Farina, here are the latest hydrological reports. As for the specific parameters you asked to take note of, I'm afraid things still don't look good. I see. It's as I thought, then. As your god, I did already expect this, but I wanted to see how far your human wisdom would allow you to analyze it. All manner of signs indicate that the prophecy will still come to pass. Forget it. That's not something you need to worry about right now. Uh, well, as I understand it, the Fontaine Research Institute is also trying to find a way to counter the rising water levels. Really? Uh, have they found anything? I'm afraid that they haven't found any effective solution thus far. <clears throat> oh, is that so? Well, no 
wonder. This issue has reached the realm of the gods after all. Still, their spirit is praiseworthy. of suspicion. Maybe this is fine. I just need to keep going, and everyone will be saved. <sighs> Alright, Farina, don't think too hard about this. You need rest. Tomorrow's a new day. Lady Farina, here are the new trial reports for the latest cases, as well as a summary of the follow-up. Uh, there'll be no need for that. I've seen them already. There's no need to go back over scenes I've witnessed in person before! Lady Farina, I I've waited so, so long for this chance to see you in this manner. Indeed, my dear loyal citizen. This joyous moment is an honor for us both. Lady Farina, we're detecting significant hydrological anomalies near Poisson. Understood. Keep monitoring. Keep me informed should anything come up at the Institute. Farina, it's oh, it's like a dream being able to speak with you up close like this. I've heard that the first member of our family who was honored to receive an audience with you was Madame Deoteria almost 20 generations ago. <laughs> and what a fine family yours is indeed. It brings me great joy to meet such a faithful believer, a descendant of a line most ardent. Surely you exaggerate, Lady Farina. Uh, um, my lady? Hmm? What is it, good citizen? Oh, are... are you crying? Uh-huh. 
<laughs> really now? I didn't even notice. <sighs> this must be the overflow of Hydro from my person. <laughs> well, can't quite help being the god whose dominion is the waters, can I? <laughs> no wonder. No wonder. A manifestation of your power, then. Oh, Archon, I am honored to have witnessed it. Honored indeed. So interminable. <laughs> so lonely. Just how much longer? Hundreds of years must have passed by now. Perhaps the show must go on for hundreds more. I never imagined that it would hurt so much. <laughs> Reached my limit. <laughs> no. Perhaps I reached it long ago. Today I didn't even notice my own tears. I want to tell someone, anyone, about this. But would that not destroy all I've done so far? I've conducted so many investigations across the centuries, but there's not even a sliver of hope that we might break the prophecy. All I can do is keep heart. I must maintain this act, and it's the only way to save Fontaine. Please, mirror me. You have to succeed. Farina, you don't have to shoulder this burden alone. Although I don't know what you might be keeping from everyone, your people are more than willing to share your burden with you. Share my burden. <sighs> That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. But even if your burden doesn't need to be shared, you can still choose to confide in someone. Just share it with me. I'm what you call a witness. A witness? Huh. Yes, I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. And if Tevat is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? <sighs> if that's the case... She's right. I could confide in her, couldn't I? But if things don't play out as expected, the people of Fontaine will be the ones to pay the price. No, Farina. You shouldn't be selfish. <sighs> but what if... What if it's really all right? Farina, you've worked so hard for so, so long. Surely it would be okay to put yourself first for once. Just this once. Is it such an outrageous thing to do anyway? To find someone in whom you can confide your frustrations and sorrows? 
Surely it could not hurt. If you let this opportunity slip through your fingers, it might never come by again. Think about it long and hard. get better all you need to do dear spectator is to witness my performance until the curtains fall once let her in on the full plan? Yes, it had to be done. To deceive the heavenly principles, you must first deceive yourself. She did very well. If she had let her resolve falter even once in these five centuries, Fontaine would have been doomed to the most tragic fate. It seems that trusting humanity was the right decision after all. I believe that I understand how your deception works, but that is only half the truth, is it not? How would you build on this foundation to save the people of Fontaine? That is the most important thing. Ah, good, good. Of course the Udex of Fontaine has pinpointed the crux of the issue. I'm sure you've long sensed that the Oratrice is no simple machine, yes? I've always suspected that it had its own consciousness. And Linny did mention that he heard a human voice within the core chamber. It now seems that that person was you, hidden within the machine all along. Am I right? And then I became one with the Oratrice, taking Fontaine's Gnosis with me. Yes, it would seem so, wouldn't it? Alas, your understanding of this device still lacks sufficient depth. In truth, it is no enactor of justice. It is, in fact, a device created to kill the God of Justice. I beg your pardon? Oh, you have it. And to be more precise, not only will the Oratrice take down the God of Justice, it will also take down the Divine Throne upon which she has been placed. <laughs> I mean, did you think I would be the sort to enjoy peaceful repose while Farina suffered? My work over these last 500 years has been to constantly accumulate indemnidium within the Oratrice. But really, some have already discovered that only a small fraction of the energy generated by the device was ever used to provide power to Fontaine. The vast majority has been, had to be, accumulated to enact this death sentence. It was all a part of your plan then, both the trial and the sentence. Indeed. This power, accrued over five centuries, could have sustained Fontanians for millennia, had it only been used for that purpose. Almost all of it has now been stored within the Oratrice. But only power of this magnitude could hope to destroy the Hydro Archon's divine throne, shaking the rules established by Celestia, and breaking through the institution that is the Seven. So the Oratrice's call for death was for neither Farina nor Fosalor, but for the Hydro Archon. The destruction of that divine throne. If I do not misunderstand your intent, you must be... Returning what's rightfully yours to you, of course. In other words, this was all done to return the authority of the Hydro Archon to the Hydro Dragon of this planet. <sighs> but...
No, oh, what? Getting sad again, are we? The authority of the ancient dragons shall soon be yours once more, O oh Hydro Dragon Sovereign. And this is the face you make. <laughs> All you've done throughout the years is just so you can sacrifice yourself at the very end. I've never quite seen it that way, you know. Even now, I'm quite pleased at how well my deception worked. <laughs> Hydro Dragon, Hydro Dragon, don't cry. I must say, had it been within my rights, I would have loved to judge the heavenly principles themselves. Were they not guilty of essentially the same crime? Egeria stole the power of the Primordial Sea, and the heavenly principles stole the power you ancient dragons possessed. I, for my part, am the god of justice. And is it not just that your original powers should be returned to you? Speaking of justice, I have always believed that justice lies in the process of pursuing human existence itself. So, if the theft of the Primordial Sea's might was Fontaine's original sin, then, leaving matters of procedural right and wrong aside, the descent of the Fontanians as humans and their right to exist in this world would be Fontaine's original justice. In other words, existence was Egeria's justice. And to me, justice is the continuation of that existence. Defying the prophecy and ensuring that Fontaine's people shall live on, that should be the justice enthroned over all others. At this point, we, whether it be myself or all other Fontanians, have shouldered the burden of this sin for far too long. Eudex Nervillet, the highest judge in our land, when you regain your full power as an elemental sovereign, what verdict shall you pass upon us? So when I was invited to the court of Fontaine to serve as Eudex, I see now that that was your idea too. At last, I now understand the true purpose behind this position. In the beginning, I was uninterested in human existence. But these five centuries of living alongside them have gradually brought about mutual understanding between us. And I have even attempted to feel as they feel. You are a devious one, Fosalor. Things being as they are, surely you know that I could never declare them to be guilty. <sighs> the hour of my execution is almost here. For the sinner. The curtain call has come. I know I may not sound it, but faced with death, I find myself a little afraid. Perhaps this is one thing both gods and humans have in common. <laughs> Farewell, Nervalet. I hope you've enjoyed the part you played these 500 years.
Udex Nivellet, hereby declare, People of Fontaine, your sins are forgiven. What just happened? Has the death sentence been carried out? Was that bright light some sort of misdirection? I have a feeling that something huge just happened. <sighs> but since we're all still alive and haven't been dissolved, I assume whatever happened was good for us. It's time to end this. We must meet our punishment to that beast. I have gained the strength sufficient to deal with it. Through certain means, I now have the ability to separate the power of the Primordial Sea from that creature. We should seize the opportunity to pursue our quarry. Traveler, now that the oratories can no longer function, I require an executor to help me mete out justice. The root of the calamities befalling Fontaine, the beast that enacts the prophecy, its name is the all-devouring narwhal. Come with me, traveler. The hour of execution has come. Suppress its root from within. You're in for a little shot. Manifest the authority of the ancient dragons. Witness the might of the primordial sea. Try not 
Thanks for helping with the cleanup. It should have been my job, but... Oh well. It was just supposed to be a short private training session for me. I didn't think that my disciple and my master's pet would start brawling in the meantime. Well, actually, I had a feeling that it would happen at some point. But they bumped into one another earlier than I thought. What a blunder. I suppose I'll have to swing my sword three million times as penance. That power... Who are you, exactly? Uh, Hyman has an idea. From what she said earlier, she must be Child's master. Skirk, right? It's just that he gave us the impression that she was the... less... talkative person. I simply did not have anything to say to the weak. But you, on the other hand... Managed to defeat the all-devouring narwhal without using power from beyond this world. So you may speak to me as equals. I have to agree. It's a strange use of a planet's primordial waters just to raise an all-devouring narwhal. That kind of power is wasted on it. It's not cooperative. It eats too much. And I have more important things to do with my time than pet sitting. The only thing that creature has going for it is its looks. All in all, it fails as a pet. Uh, Miss Skirk? Uh, I think you might have missed the point. The point being? Well, being that this pet almost destroyed an entire nation. So what sort of person is your master? Well, child's master's master. Wait, is that right? Oh, right. So you don't know him. Sorry, I assumed you did. His name is Sir Tologi. Huh? I am unfamiliar with that name. Huh. So Master is insufficiently famous. Hmm. How should I describe him, then? Have you heard of the name The Fowl? The Fowl? Still nothing? Well, how about the visionary? Vetterfulnir, then? Or Gold Rhinedaughter? Ooh! That one we've heard! Rhinedaughter's part of the Hexen Circle. She's obeyed with mom, right? Oh, so you do know that name. To be honest, I also heard all of those names and titles from my master. I don't actually know them either. But I suppose you understand now, yes? My master is likely a similar sort to Rhinedaughter. They are both pursuing some form of perfection. Wait! Didn't you also mention a visionary person? I didn't quite catch their name. Actually, never mind that. I believe it expedient to inform you that the all-devouring Narwhal used up nearly all its strength fighting you. Such roiling hydro energies will prove difficult for the planet's deep seas to digest. As such, the Fontaine back on the surface has most likely been thrown into chaos. In other words, the prophecy that you've been fretting over should now be in full swing. What? Not to worry. Fosalor has already managed to deceive the Heavenly Principles. In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only Farina will remain, weeping on her throne. Only 
then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Initiate emergency rescue! Proceeding! It's a miracle! The water is receding! We didn't dissolve! The prophecy was wrong! The prophecy was wrong! to meet with Miss Navia, spokesperson of the Spina di Rasula, and we spoke about Poisson's present and future. Old soil can still give birth to new bloom, Miss Navia stated. Hope is like seeing a small cookie when you're starving late at night. You just need a little of it. Skyship Winglet, lunar brain of the Fontaine Research Institute. The various disputes that have arisen on account of Mr. Edwin have suddenly become a shield over the Institute, with Jurier turning out to be a once-overlooked hidden gem. People always call the first researcher mad, but few know what to call the second. And should that latter person achieve a miracle, they would find it all the harder to find a word with which to classify him and his team. Wow! Paimon barely recognizes the people in the reports! Are those really Jurier and Navia? They sound like real big shots! What do you think? Pretty enthralling, huh? The Steambird's idea was pretty simple. With the disaster just having passed, we would print a free edition packed to the margins with good news to calm people down. The value for these big scoops lies in their inevitable follow-ups. We'll publish further reports and go into the stories behind those people. Edwin's assistant, Jurier, created a true flying ship, while Navia is leading people in the reconstruction of their home. I'm sure that these stories could draw even your well-traveled eye. Pyman's curious too! Uh, wait a minute. Didn't we watch a 
everything happen from start to finish? What's there to be curious about? And that's exactly why I'd like you to come conduct interviews with me. You're the best incubators of news, if you haven't noticed. And also, with you around, I'm sure I'll get to see that duke. Uh, are you sure? Hasn't he turned you down several times already? Oh, this time will be different. Come on! Let's head to Poisson first, and then make a trip to the fortress. There are some things you'll only know when you get there. <laughs>